Praise the Lord, beloved. We are blessed, amen, to be here one more time to be able to lift up and magnify the name of the Lord God Almighty. For truly our God is worthy to be praised. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, amen. And the scripture goes on to say, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Beloved, truly, this is a blessed day because it is the day that the Lord God has made. Amen. I don't know what your week has been like, praise God, but I've been able to see and witness the power of God's grace. And truly, that grace is amazing. So we've come to lift up, we've come to magnify and just to give our God praise. Amen. We praise him from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same because his name alone is worthy to be praised. If the Lord God has done anything for you, praise God. Then go ahead and lift up and magnify the Lord God and say to God, Lord, I'm glad that I'm here right now, Father God, to be able to lift you up and to magnify you and to just to glorify our God. For truly, he's a good God and there's none like him. Amen. You can search all over, but still find that can't nobody do you like Jesus. For truly, he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. So we thank God for our worship experience. Amen. If you come with an expectation, then you shall receive because God blesses those amen who believe so we thank him as we prepare for our uh, doxology praise God from whom all blessings flow praise the Lord that's a message even in that amen praise God from whom all blessings flow praise him all creatures here below praise him above ye heavenly hosts praise father son and holy ghost Our call to worship this morning. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and the dry land, which his hands have formed. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Praise God. Our hymn of celebration is Israel all on the altar. Also, lead me, guide me. I believe, beloved, that we are in for a blessing. Amen. You have longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase and have earnestly, fervently prayed, but you cannot have rest or be perfectly blessed until all is on the altar is laid. Without any further lining of this morning's hymn of celebration, may the Lord God bless. Amen. As we tune in to hear the Lord bless through music. You have longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase and have earnestly forgotten But you cannot have rest or be perfectly blessed until all on the altar is laid. Here's your 
but you walk with the Lord in the light of His Word and have peace and contentment always. You
God, our Father in heaven, you alone are worthy of all our praises. We, pray, we raise our voices in praises of your wonderful work in our lives. God, please accept our thanksgiving for all you do in our lives. We know you are mighty and your glory is eternal. And we ask that you will cleanse us of our iniquities and make us worthy to be in your presence. Help us to enjoy all the blessings that come from you and let others see your glory in our lives. Heavenly Father, we pray that the day will soon come when we will once again be able to gather in your house, in your presence. Until then, God, we continue to ask your blessings upon each of us in a mighty way. We pray, Father, that you will bless the sick and the shut-in, the homeless and the bereaved families. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we ask these and all other blessings in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, I will read scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7 through 15. As you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the gen genuineness of your love against the eagerness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not to do something, but even to desire to do, to do something. Now, finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by com 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 completing according to your means. For if the eagerness are there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who has much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The reading of the gospel for the people of God. Amen. Beloved, we are so grateful uh, for what the Lord God is doing in our midst. We continue to lift him up. We continue to give him praise. Praise God. We thank the Lord God for being everything that we need in this life and the life to come. We praise God for the communication that's taking place between members within the church, lifting up and encouraging one another, checking on one another, providing comfort, sending cards. What a blessing to those, amen, who have been mourning and have had a loved one to transition, amen, to their eternal resting home. We're so grateful to be in the midst and to be a part of a body of Christ while we realize that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but yet God is yet faithful to each and every one of us. He meets us where we are. We're growing. We're being sanctified. We're being set apart, amen, to be used for God in his kingdom, coming out of the world, now becoming a light to those that are yet in the world. The Lord God uses us in ways beyond our understanding. The world is always looking for perfection, but Lord God is looking for submission. Someone that's willing to humble themselves, amen, and be yielded to God's spirit and God's will. So we are grateful, amen, for the Lord God, our God, amen, who is truly worthy to be praised. We ask, amen, that you keep all of the announcements in mind, beloved, and to be in prayer as uh, the general conference is fastly approaching. I pray for traveling mercies, pray for grace, and that God's will will be done. We pray, amen, that the Lord God will return our bishop, the Bishop Harry Lee Seawright of the 9th Episcopal District, along with our beloved supervisor, Reverend Sharita Moon Seawright. 
For God has done a great work through them, and the Lord will continue to finish that which he has begun. And for that, we give him praise. So let us continue to be in prayer, uh, praying that uh, traveling mercies, praying for safety for those that will be in attendance. Uh, praise the Lord that God will continue to shield him. And we know that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. And in the time of trouble, we can say God is our refuge and our fortress, and in him we will put our trust. And beloved, uh, soon you'll be receiving correspondence regarding the opening of the church, the official opening of the church. Um, we've met with the uh, Ninth Episcopal District, our Episcopal leadership, Bishop Seawright, and he is recommending and suggesting to all of us that all churches be open at least by the 1st of August. Uh, by the 1st of August. So uh, just about everything is in place here at St. John, but we do want to make sure that we have everything that we need and so that when you come, uh, we will have the necessary things in place. And we've been working the whole time, this making sure uh, that God's church is in order. We've been maintaining it. And we will just look so forward, amen, to having the voices in the church, uh, hearing your voices, hearing, singing, and, you know, things will still be done uh, as in order based upon, um, you know, the COVID restrictions, other restrictions of the CDC and our local public health, and then those things by the church as well. So be on the lookout for some correspondence. We'll be sending some information in the mail to you uh, that would help us to be prepared when that day comes. Here again, um, the target date right now is the 1st of August, but praise the Lord, we just never know what God will do, but we do want to make sure that we are in um, compliance and support of the entire Ninth Episcopal District, uh, knowing that we are targeting the 1st of August. Uh, praise the Lord. But the Lord God can still work in that situation. And again, we just want to make sure that everything is in order. So continue to pray. Amen. That soon and very soon, amen, that we will see each other face to face. At this time in our worship experience, we'd like to lift up our tithes, our offerings, amen, and our benevolent gifts. Uh, God is faithful. Yes, he is to continue to meet each and every need. The Bible lets us know, praise God, that I am like a tree, a planted by the rivers of water. I bring forth fruit in my season, my leaf shall not wither, and whatever I do will prosper. For the blessings of the Lord makes tr truly rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. The Lord has opened up unto me his good treasure and blessed the work of my hands. He's commanded the blessings upon me in my storehouse and all that I undertake. God delights in my prosperity. He gives me power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant upon the earth. God has given me all things that pertain to life and godliness, and I am well able to possess all that God has provided for me. Amen. As we now lift up our tithes, offerings, and benevolent gifts. Well, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God. For just blessing us to give back unto you what you've given to us we thank you lord god in the name of jesus that you continue to bless the givers as only you can father we thank you that you look upon the heart not at the amount and lord god that we give cheerfully and not of necessity and we praise you for that lord we thank you lord god for devouring the enemy for our sake lord god as we have brought our tithes into the storehouse we honor, we praise you, Lord God, and may your blessings be upon your people. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we magnify your name. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And beloved, there are different platforms which we can continue to give unto the Lord. Uh, we give through Givelify. We give through PayPal. We give through Cash App. And of course, you can continue to mail your tithes, your offerings, and your benevolent gifts into the office or once again, just to be able to get out of the house, you can bring them by the church. And uh, Reverend Davis is here on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And of course, we're here at different times also during the week. But during those times, you may want to call before you come. So we're just so grateful, beloved, for all that you've done and all that you continue to do to help the, the Lord's house be what he has called and desired for it to be. 
Again, thank you for your giving. At this time, we prepare to receive our Samonic hymn. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart sentiment hope for all I do Jesus you're the center of my joy Jesus you're the center of my joy
Thank you, Brother Antonio, for allowing God to use you on this day as you've blessed us, praise the Lord, from the opening through the Samonic. And we know that God is moving by his spirit, praise the Lord, for truly Jesus is the center of our joy. Let us pray, beloved. Father in heaven, we continue to bless you. We worship you. We magnify you. We glorify you. For Lord, you alone are worthy to be praised. You're our peace that surpasses all understanding and our joy that's unspeakable. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord God, for your grace. We praise you, Father, for mercy. Lord God, for being such a compassionate God. Lord, we thank you for the power that yet resides in your word, Lord God, the power that is in the name of Jesus, God, the power of your spirit that allows us to live a life that brings you honor, God, and brings you glory. God, we, we thank you today, God, for all that you are yet doing. God, we thank you for your holiness and your presence. Lord God, we thank you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, for the anointing of your spirit, Lord God, that destroys every yoke and every bondage. Lord God, this is your servant's prayer, God, and we thank you. I thank you, Lord God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, O oh God, is acceptable unto you, my rock, God, and my redeemer. O oh God, the only way that I'm able to stand, Lord God, even at this moment, God, is because of the power of your grace. O oh God, we thank you, Lord God, that your purpose is yet being fulfilled. Lord God, in our lives, in the ministry, O oh God, that you've entrusted to us. Lord, we thank you, Father God, in the name name of Jesus for souls being saved oh God and lives being transformed God we thank you oh God in the name of Jesus for just your presence God your holiness God thou art holy and worthy to be praised God holy 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 Lord God almighty oh God we thank you even now oh God that you've shown us that your word is not bound by distance God Lord you're using these different platforms God to yet bless your people but father we thank you oh God that when the true gathering comes together Lord the word says I have not seen and ear have not heard the things oh God that you have in store for those that love you God father we thank you God that Lord God during our time of separation through our time of this pandemic God that we've grown more and more in our love for you God that we may love one another father in the name of Jesus I just want to say thank you God thank you father God for your keeping grace thank you Lord God for your power thank you father that you're the author and finish of our faith God and you're able to finish that which you've begun and for that we give you praise God and we honor and we bless you hallelujah to you God Truly, Father, there's none like you, and we thank you. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord God, as we bind the powers of darkness that come against the hearing of your people. Give us ears to hear, Lord, and a heart to receive. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord, beloved, for truly God is worthy to be praised. Thank you, Father. And if you have your Bibles, I would ask that you please turn with me to Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, the 37th chapter of Ezekiel. Glory to God. Starting at verse 1 out of the English Standard Version of the Bible. For the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley. And behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. 
And as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your grave and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken. I will do it, declares the Lord. I would like to use from, for a brief subject on this morning and it shall be, and it shall be. When we look at today's text, praise the Lord, we find that Israel found themselves in a condition where there was no life. The Lord allowed e the prophet Ezekiel, a man through a vision, to be placed in the valley of dry bones. For Ezekiel to be able to see what had become of Israel. But because of God's love and because God is a covenant God, the Lord God will always have someone that will speak forth words of life. Although, beloved, we may find ourselves in situations. You may not be in a valley of dry bones, but you may have a valley of dry bones. It could be relational, it could be health, it could be job related. There are many situations that we find ourselves, glory to God, where there seems to be no life. But I stop by to let you know on today, praise the Lord, that there is still power in the prophetic word of God. There's still power that when we hear from God and we open our mouths and speak forth what thus says the Lord, the angels of God will hearken to the word of God and it shall be just as God has said it would be. So we find that the Lord has his hands upon Ezekiel and he brought him into the spirit and set him in the middle of the valley and that valley was full of dry bones. Think, beloved, just for a moment that when we find ourselves in situations where it appears that God is not present, where it appears that all hope is lost, where it appears that you've done all that you know to do and you're ready to give up, but when you hear a word from the Lord and God speaks it down in your spirit, whether that's a prophetic word or whether you're hearing it, glory to God, through someone else, God is still speaking. It shall be just as the Lord said it will be. For truly all hope is not lost. And he said he led him about. And behold, there were many on the surface of the valley. And although the valley, they say, was very dry. I love the way God is giving the description to let us know it was not just dry, but it was very dry. And he said to him, son of man, can these bones live? And, and Ezekiel answered the Lord and says, oh Lord, you know. Why does God know? Because God is God and God is the beginning and the end of all things. Because God is still the one that speaks forth life. He's still the alpha and the omega. He's still the beginning and the end. He's still the one that was and truly he's the one that will come again. 
So he says to Ezekiel, prophesy. In other words, call those things that be not as though they were. Speak forth my word over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Beloved, many times we're hearing a lot of word, but it's not the word of God. The Bible says, amen, that this word, glory to God, this word that has been tried, this word that will not return, Lord, this word, though heaven and earth may pass away, this word, speak the word of the Lord, Ezekiel. And God said, he will cause breath to enter them, and they shall live. In other words, it shall be just as I have given it to you. And I will lay sinews upon you and cause flesh to come upon you and, and cover you. In other words, the ligaments, glory to God, was, was going to be bringing everything together. And it was going to hold it there in place. And you shall live, glory to God. And you shall know that I am the Lord, glory to God. Amen. I love the word of God. Praise the Lord because when that word is down on the inside of us, beloved. Amen. The Lord God speak words of life. He says there's life and death and the power of the tongue. Choose ye this day, glory to God, to hear the word of the Lord and, and, and follow the commandments of God. Be obedient to what God is showing you in this time in your life. And the Bible says in and, you, and you'll know that I'm God. In other words, when I bring you out of your situation, when I bring reconciliation to your marriage, when I bring healing in your body, when I make a way where there seems to be no way, when I open doors that no man can close, when you look back over your life and you see that it was God on your side all along, praise the Lord, then you will lift up praises and adoration to the God that created the heavens and the earth, and we will know that it was God. Surely we live in a world and a society where man wants to be recognized as if, glory to God, that, that they created themselves. And man wants recognition. Man wants their name spelled correctly. Man wants to be acknowledged, glory to God, as if we have some power within ourselves. I'm reminded of what Peter said, amen, when the, when the beggar, praise God, uh, uh, found themselves up and leaping, and, and then they were looking upon Peter and John, and Peter says, why you look upon me as if, though in my own power that I've caused this man to be whole? But it was Jesus, glory to God of Nazareth, in whom uh, you crucified and dead, and died, and he died, and you buried him. So the power is still in God. And Ezekiel prophesied just as the Lord commanded him. Glory to God. And then there was a sound. Praise God. We're walking by faith and not by sight. There was a sound and behold a rattling. Glory to God. Can you not hear the foundation being shaken even now? Praise God. Even when Paul and Silas was praying in prison. Glory to God. There was a sound. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless God, it was not the only sound. Even on the day of Pentecost, there was a sound, glory to God. Beloved, can you not hear a sound even now? A sound that's working in your situation, a rattling that's taking place, a setting loose. Jesus said, I've come to set the captives free. Your shackles are being loosed even now because of the power that is in God's word. Praise the Lord, and it shall be just the way the Lord God has declared it and decreed it to be so in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, glory to God. And he looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath. Everything may look okay, but until you have the breath, the ruah of God, the Spirit of the Lord living and dwelling down on the inside of you, we are still dead. Only the Spirit of God can give life, praise the Lord. But even when Adam was created, the Lord God had to breathe the breath of life, the ruah into his soul, and he became a living soul. Just like the Bible lets us know, beloved, that we are still dead in our trespasses until the Spirit of the Lord God gives us life. And then we began to live a life that brings honor and glory to our God. And the Bible says, prophesy to the breath. 
prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come, four winds, oh, breathe on these slain that they may live. And he says, I prophesied as I was commanded. And the breath came into them. And they lived and stood on their feet and exceed in great army. Son of man, he explains that this is the bones of the house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up. And our hope is lost. And we are cut off. Beloved, when we go through things in life, praise God, it seems though that we're cut off from society. We're cut off from joy. We're cut off from peace. But when the spirit of the Lord speaks life down on the inside of us, we have a joy that's unspeakable and a peace that surpasses all understanding. You rock when you're not in a rocking chair. Praise the Lord. You sing when there's no band playing. Glory to God. For it's the spirit of the Lord that gives life. That gives us and brings the revelation of who Jesus is. And he lives and he dwells down on the inside of us. And the bones that were dried up. And it appeared that their hope was lost. But the Lord says, I open your grave and raise you from the grave. Oh, my people, I will bring you into a land of, of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves. Beloved, and he says that I will put a spirit within you and you shall live I will place you in your own land, then you should know that I am the Lord. He says, I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. It shall be just as the Lord has declared. Beloved, I don't know where you find yourself on this day, praise God. But I'm excited, amen, because it is the day that the Lord God has made. I'm excited, praise the Lord God, that there have been so many things, amen, that the world said we could not do, would not do. They're going to shut the doors and we cannot do. But when the Lord God speaks a word of life, praise the Lord, the devil in hell cannot even stop it. So we come to bless God and we want to magnify him and continue to give God praise, give God honor, and give God the glory. Has the Lord God spoken something down in your life, praise God, and it does not appear that it's going to come to pass? But beloved, I believe in the name of Jesus that you continue to hold on just a little while longer. That change is going to come. Do you find yourself in that hopeless situation, in that marriage, in that relationship, and you just don't know which way to turn, and it appears, amen, that's drying us all around? When the power of the Holy Ghost comes, amen, God comes to give life, and he comes to give it to you more abundantly. As you lift up and praise God and magnify him, you are saying to God, Lord, you are bigger than and you are greater than my situation. Glory to God, amen, that which is impossible with man is possible with God. How is it that Mary, praise the Lord, could become the mother, amen, of Jesus, and she had not been with a man? Do not limit the power of the Holy Ghost in your situation. Our God is more than able to do what needs to be done. Amen. If you had a conversation with Lazarus, Lazarus knew he was dead. Praise God. But when the resurrection came, Jesus the Christ, amen, Lazarus was called from the dead. Beloved, amen, if you think your situation is over, glory to God, I want to introduce you to a man that's able to do exceedingly and abundantly, but all that you could ask or think according to the power that works down on the inside of him. Do you not know that they thought, glory to God that it was over when they took our Jesus and nailed him to an old rugged cross. Do you not think that the devil thought he had victory praise the Lord? But amen. But it was prophesied and it was said glory to God that they go ahead and nail him to the cross. Amen. Go ahead and stretch me wide. Amen. I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to do it for the world. I'm going to even ask the Father to forgive you because they know not what they do. Glory to God. And just as it was prophesied, amen, that Jesus was hung on that rugged cross he bore your sins he bore my sins he bore the sins of the world but the bible says amen but he who was crucified would be raised on the third day hallelujah and beloved he was through the power of the holy spirit glory to god God raised Jesus from the dead, amen that you and I can have an opportunity amen at eternal life Jesus says that my life I give unto you 
as he's given his life for the world, beloved. God will bring it to pass, for truly all hope is not lost. And just as God has said in his word, it shall be. What word have you received from the Lord over your lifetime? What word have you received from the Lord that it appears that it's not going to come to pass? Praise God. The Lord God is more than able. It doesn't matter whether your situation has been like that for 38 years. We know that he'll heal man, the, the man, man by the pool of Bethesda. Amen. You could be in your condition. You've gone to doctors. Amen. And the doctor still doesn't have an answer. Jesus is the answer, beloved. Jesus is the way. We've been looking for God in all the wrong places. Amen. He's not where we think he is. But he is, praise the Lord, sitting at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Amen. And beloved, when you call upon the name of Jesus, he shows up. He works in ways that's so beyond our understanding. I don't know what your needs are, but God does, amen. And he's a God that supplies everything according to his riches and glory. Do you need, amen, Jesus in your life right now, beloved? Are you in a place in your life, praise God, that you just can't fix it? Are you at a place in your life, glory to God, there's dryness all around, praise God? The Lord says, I am your salvation. I am your new life. I am your way where there seems to be no way. I am everything that you need. I'm your peace that surpasses all understanding. I am your joy. I'm your mind regulator. I'm the God of your salvation. I am your God and you are my people. Beloved, if you believe that today, the Lord says in his word that I will no wise cast you out, but I will receive you into the kingdom and forgive you of your sins. As we pray, beloved, we believe God just as his word tells us that he will save and he will give life and give it abundantly. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, someone needs you, Lord God. Oh, Father, they need you in a mighty way. Lord, they find themselves part of that valley of dryness, Lord, and they need the spirit of life. They need a refreshing, Lord. They need their confidence lifted up. And Lord, we know you won't cast them aside. So we thank you for saving them, even now, Lord, repenting of their sins and turning to you, Lord God, that you will give life and breathe the breath of life within their hearts, within their souls. Thank you for saving them, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless you, beloved. We thank God for your salvation. We praise God for lifting up our continents. We praise God, amen, for the power that is in the word. Just as God has said it, it shall be. For the promises of God are yea and amen to those that believe. Do you believe, beloved? If you believe, you shall receive. So we thank God for giving us that measure of faith to be able to believe, to be able to exalt him, to magnify him and to give him praise and to give him honor and give him glory. I'm just excited, praise the Lord. I'm excited for all that God has done in my life, what he's yet doing in my life, what God is doing in the lives of others. We're seeing miracles take place. We're seeing healing, restoration. We're just seeing the power of God, amen, in our hearts and in our midst. Praise the Lord. Don't give up on God because he surely hasn't given up on you, beloved. And so we give God praise and we honor him and we'll continue to bless him because he alone is worthy to be praised. Amen. As we affirm our faith, praise God through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, and he ascended into heaven, and seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Beloved, as we our doxology, as we praise God from whom all blessings flow.
And now, beloved, as we prepare to leave this place, but never his presence, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord God, that as we prepare to leave this place, but never your presence, may your spirit, Lord God, rest, rule, and abide within each and every heart, henceforth and forevermore. And the people of God agreed by saying, Amen. Bless you, beloved.